everyone, it's Nadia from Yarn Utopia. Today we're making this super chunky, super soft basket weave blanket. We are using the basket weave uh, stitch in this blanket. It is so much fun to make and this yarn is so incredibly soft. I absolutely love this. I, my blanket is a little too big to even unfold on camera, but check out those photos in the blog and you'll see this spread out on the bed. This is a queen sized blanket. So it's about 70 inches wide and about 72 inches long um, but you can even make yours as big or small as you want and I'll get into that information pretty soon but I do want to mention the yarn we're using today big thank you to Red Heart Yarns for providing the yarn for this project today this is called Sweet Yarn and these come in seven ounce balls of yarn in 89 yards I used a total of 20 skeins of this yarn so that came to calculate it out 1780 so 1780 yards of yarn is in this big bulky piece and it is so heavy and so luscious I absolutely enjoyed making this and I cannot wait to use it so that is how big my blanket is but um, yours can be as big as you want so this uh, size hook we're using today is a 10 millimeter size hook you can use um, a 10 millimeter or even go up to a 12 millimeter size hook if you want to. You'll need a, a bigger size hook for this project. Also, you're going to need a scissors and a yarn needle. And then I have my little lamb of my measuring tape because we are going to get into measurements pretty soon. So those are the supplies you need. Now, sizing. I will put a link in the description of this blog, of the blog post on yarnutopia.com where you can make this into a baby blanket, you can make it into a twin size blanket, you can make it into a full size, queen size, which is this one, and even a king size blanket. I will put all the sizes on there. Now this is the queen size blanket. It goes into a multiple it works in, in a multiple of eight stitches, okay? So if your foundation chain just has to be um, a multiple of eight and you can make this as long or short or however big you want it to be just by measurements. So uh, keep that in mind when you're making yours. And then we're doing a very simple single crochet edge around this piece. So it's very easy just to clean up the edges. I just did a simple single crochet edge on my blanket. So that is, yeah, that's the edge there. So before we begin making this beautiful blanket, uh, check out the links in the description of this video. I'll have a link to all the supplies you need and more information about this blanket as well as links to my social media. So you'll get the link to my blog where you'll get the free written pattern portion of this uh, pattern as well as a link to my Facebook and Instagram. So make sure if you make a blanket like this, if you make a queen size or even down to a baby size, please share your photos on Facebook and on Instagram and make sure to hashtag Yarn Utopia so I can see your beautiful work and also Snapchat me. I'm Yarn Utopia on Snapchat so make sure you're snapping me your pictures of your crochet pieces as well. Big thank you to Red Heart Yarns for providing the yarn today. Big thank you to my dad Fouad Azmet for taking the time to film this and edit our tutorial here. Make sure you subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. That's a biggie. So we appreciate everybody who subscribes and when you're at my website, make sure to donate and support Yarn Utopia so we can continue to bring you these crochet tutorials even after uh, all this time. So yeah, so thanks so much for watching everyone. Let's just get right into it and get started and make this beautiful basket weave chunky blanket. Let's start out by making a slip knot. So put your short end over your long end, then fold this down and then pull your long end through and pull tight and there's your slip knot. Then insert your hook and we can start. So let's start out by chaining a multiple of eight. So um, whatever, however big of a measurement you want, make sure to check out that notes section of my pattern uh, to get different sizes of blankets. I want mine to be 70 inches wide, so I'm actually going to chain 104. That is a multiple of 8. Um, so it's 8, I think it's 8 times 13 is 104. So we're just going to yarn over and pull through. There's 1. Yarn over and pull through. Two. I'm not going to make you watch me chain my 
whole thing here. So just chain the amount you need uh, for the blanket size that you're making. You can chain um, anything that is the measurement that you need. So if you're making a baby blanket or a twin size blanket or a queen blanket like me, you can chain to your measurement, but just make sure it is in a multiple of eight. And then once you have your chain done, I'll meet you up and we can go on to row one. Alright, so I did a little bit of experimenting with my chain and measuring out. Um, if you are using the same exact yarn or a chunkier yarn like me, if you chained about 64, that would be a measurement for a baby blanket. If you chained 80, that would be more for like a twin size bed uh, or like a throw size blanket. And if you chained 104, that would be a queen size bed. That's what I'm doing. And then if you chained 144, that would be more for like a king size bed. So you can chain the amount however you want um, by those measurements. And I'll put all that information in the notes section of my blog post so you can get that chain amount. But if you're using a thinner yarn or a different type of yarn, um, you will have to obviously chain a different amount to be the measurement that you need it to be for the type of blanket you're making. So let's go on to row one. We're going to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So the loop on the hook does not count as a chain. So this is one chain here. Here's two. Here's three. And this is the fourth chain right here. And what I personally like to do is turn the chain toward me like this. And you can see there's these back ridges on our piece here, right here, and right here. So we're going to count fourth from the hook. One, two, three, four. This chain right here. And if you look back here, there is a back ridge. Oops, it's right here. Okay. So one, two, three, four. We're going to yarn over on our hook, then go into that fourth chain from the hook, yarn over and then pull that through, then yarn over and pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. That is a double crochet. Now this chain right here it's three chains, one, two, three. That is going to count as a stitch, okay? So when we come back on row two, we are going to be working in this uh, stitch here. So don't forget about that one. So now what we're going to do is just double crochet in each of these chains across here. So this very next chain right here, you can see the back ridge, yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. Just like that. Okay, so we're just doing a simple double crochet all the way across this um, chain here, and I'm going to be working in these back ridges. You can work in any loop, really. It does not matter uh, which loop, if you want to work in the top two loops or in the back ridge like me you can just double crochet across and uh, at the end of this row I will meet you up and then we'll just go on to row two. Alright, just finishing row one here. So yours should just be a basic double crochet row across. So now what we're going to do is go on to row two. We are going to chain up three. One, two, and three. And that is going to count as a stitch. Just like I showed you earlier in this stitch right here, this is going to count as a stitch for uh, row one when I was showing that to you earlier. So now for this start of row two, this chain of three is going to count as uh, our first stitch, our first double crochet. So let's turn our work around. And what we're going to do is we're not going to be working in the actual stitches of this pattern, like in the stitch like this. We're going to be working around the post of these stitches. And it's really nice when we're using bulky yarn, you can easily maneuver around just by using your fingers and everything. So what we're going to do, since this chain of three counts as a stitch, we're not working around this stitch right here. We are going to be working around this next stitch right here. So for row two, we're going to make a front post double crochet around the next four stitches. So yarn over, go on this side of this second stitch right here, 
around it, just like that. Then yarn over and pull it through, just like this. Yarn over and pull through two loops. And then finish it off just like a regular double crochet by yarning over and pulling through those last two loops. That is a front post double crochet. So you have to do four of those in a row. So that was one. So hop to this next stitch right here, this post. Yarn over. Go on this side of it. Around it. Then yarn over and pull through. Then yarn over and pull through two loops. And then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. Okay, so there's two, yarn over, go on the side of the next post right here, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. Okay, and one more, yarn over, go on this side of the next post around it. Let me get this out of the way here, I have a little hair in there or something. <laughs> yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So there's four in a row there. Awesome. Now we're going to work with back post double crochets. So on the next four stitches, we are going to do back post double crochets. So a back post stitch, we're going to yarn over, come from behind the work, okay, from the back, around this next post right here, then yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. Just like that. That is a back post double crochet. So we have to do four of those in a row. So that was one. So hop to this next post right here, yarn over, go behind your work, around this next post, to the back again, then yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. And there's your second one. Again, back post, so yarn over, go from behind your work around that post, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, I do have a hair in there, weird. Sorry guys. I'm like shedding. <laughs> All right, I need to do one more there. So there's four in a row, just like that. Okay, so we did four front post double crochets and now we did four back post double crochets. Now we're going to just repeat that sequence all the way across. So we are going to do four more uh, front post double crochets and then four back post double crochets. And we're going to do that all the way across this row. So this next one here, yarn over, go from the front of your work or to the back and then back to the front. Then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There's one, here's two, here's three, and four. Okay, and then we're going to do four back post double crochets. You can kind of see the pattern there front post, then back post, then front post. And we want to do four in a row. So four front post double crochets. Now we're going to do four back post double crochets. Then four front post double crochets and four back post double crochets. And we're just going to do that all the way across this row. That's it. So do that. And then once I'm finishing this row, I will meet you up. And we'll kind of talk about too if you have extra stitches or not enough stitches also. Um, if you, you know, counted your chain, um, miscounted or something, I'll, I'll get to that also. So I'll talk about that at the end of this row and then we'll go on to row three. All right, I am ending my row with four front post double crochets. So I'm on my last repeat here. And um, if you have, you know, extra stitches or not enough stitches, what I recommend is, let's see, if you have not enough stitches, like if you have only three stitches left and then this turning chain here, what you need to do is actually put two front post double crochets on 
the stitch. So let's say um, we only have these three left, right? You don't. You want to make sure you have four in a row. So what we'll actually do is put two front post double crochets on the last stitch. That way you will have your four stitches. And that's not, you won't even notice that in the whole pattern. But you just want to make sure you have four in a row um, that is good. But if you, I mean, obviously I ended with perfect number of stitches, so I ended with four front post double crochets here. We still have this stitch, remember I said that in the beginning, we do have to work into this turning chain here. You can see one, two, three, the third chain at the top here. And my chain is a little a little different here. There we go. Yarn over, just go into that turning chain there. Okay, then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. We're working into the chain, not around it. So just make sure that you work into there for a regular double crochet just to finish off that row. So this is what it should start to look like a little bit. Yeah, it's a really long chain, so you won't see the whole thing in my video. But um, now what we're going to do is go on to row three. So let's chain up three. Every row for now on, we are going to chain up three, and that is going to count as a stitch. And at the end of your row, when you finish, you will be working in the chain up three stitch just like we, I just showed you at the end of row two. So this counts as a stitch here. So let's turn our work around like this. And we are now going to uh, do a little bit different. We're not working front post stitches first, we're working back post stitches first. And when you're looking at your work like this, for row three, we're not working around this stitch right here because this chain of three looks like it's worked into there. So we're gonna start right here in this second stitch right here. And for row three, we're going to yarn over, work from the back of our work. So we're gonna make four back post double crochets. Okay, so here's one. Okay, next one, yarn over, go from the back of your work around that next post yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So there's two, and next one here is four. I'm sorry, that's three. We have one more here. And you can see here, you just want it to correspond with the one right below it. So this is a back post stitch, so you want to make a back post stitch on that. Okay, just for row three just like that. Now the next four stitches you see are front post stitches, so we're going to put front post stitches on those four. So yarn over, go from the front of your work around that next post just like that, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, and then just do that on the next three stitches. One, two, and three, just like that. Okay, so now we're just going to alternate these eight stitches here. We're gonna do four back post double crochets in a row and then four front post double crochets in a row. So it's basically just opposite of what we did for row two. Because row two, we started doing front post stitches and ended with front post stitches. So now this row, row three, we're gonna start with these front, uh, back post stitches and end with back post stitches. So I'm gonna do that all the way across here. I have to do back post stitches now. So four back post double crochets in a row and then four front post double crochets in a row, okay? So I'm gonna do that all the way across and when I'm finishing row three, I'll meet you up and we'll go on to row four. All right, so finishing row three, like I said, we're going to end with four back post double crochets in a row. And remember, do not forget to work in this last chain here. So yarn over, go into the third chain, one, two, three, right in this chain right here. Go in there. There should be two loops on top and one loop underneath. Yarn over and pull through. Then yarn over, pull through two and yarn over and pull through two for a regular double crochet in that stitch. Now going on to row four, we are going to chain up three, one, two, and three. 
turn the work around. And we are going to, for row four, we're repeating row two. So if you need to, rewind this to see what I did for row two. But all we're going to do is front post double crochet on these first four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to back post double crochet on the next four stitches. And we're just going to repeat that sequence all the way across. So like I said, if you need to, you can uh, rewind this to see row two on how to start and finish it. But I am going to just repeat that and then I'll meet you up and we'll go on to row five. All right, so I just finished this row and it kind of looks like my texture kind of changed a little bit in my yarn, but it'll get back to the fuzzy. It's fuzzy regardless. It's really nice. So anyway, going into our last stitch for row four, we are just, like I said, repeating row two and just double crochet in that last chain there. And then going on to row five now, we are actually changing things up because this part here is thick enough and now we want to get the basket weave design. So we're actually going to chain up three, one, two, three, and turn our work around. And we're actually going to be repeating row two once again. So we're doing, instead of back post double crochets on these stitches, we're going to do front post double crochets. So yarn over, go into the front of your work around this post, then yarn over and pull that through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we're just repeating row two once again. So it's going to be a little tricky because it's going to be um, the same as what we just did for row four. But you'll see here then this design is going to change because it's going to be, instead of seeing these lines right here, you're not going to see those on this side anymore because we are going to be doing the basket weave design, which is more like a woven kind of design. So that will really pull it out now after this row. So you can see here, it's flat, just like these ones right here. So we're just going to be doing the whole basket weave look. So I'm going to, now on these next ones here, these next four, we're going back post double crochets on these next four stitches. All right, just like that. And then on the next four, we're going to do fr um, front post double crochets. And then the next four are going to get back post double crochets. So just repeat row two again. <laughs> so I'm going to do that for row five. And then I'll meet you up and we'll go on to row six. All right, finishing up row five here. Just got a double crochet in that last chain up three stitch. And then we can go on to row six. So for row six now, we are going to get back on track. So you can kind of see here how it's looking like with the weaving, it's starting to take its shape. So now we are going to kind of do this repeat like this row over on these ones. So I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna chain up three, one, two, three. Turn your work around there we go and let's see here for row six we are repeating row three so yarn over make back post double crochets on these first four stitches here okay but always remember don't work around this stitch right here because this chain of three counts there so yarn over go from the back of your work around yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so we're just doing uh, back post double crochets on the first four stitches and then front post double crochets on the next four stitches and then just repeating that sequence all the way across for row six. So as you can see here, those are the four back post double crochets. And it looks like my yarn kind of got back on track too. That was a weird little fuzzy change in that yarn. But 
you know, yarn balls, whatever. So now these next four stitches are going to get front post double crochets. I'm going a little bit faster. By now you should know how to do a front post and a back post double crochet. I do have a video tutorial on how to do a basic basket weave um, on my website. I can link that in the blog post so you can see if you want me to go a little bit slower. If you want to see a slower um, tutorial, you can definitely check that out, but now I'm just doing four back posts, then I'll do four front posts and so on. So just repeat row three for row six. And once I'm finished with row six, we'll go on to row seven. All right, I just finished row six there, and uh, just make sure that at the end here, you don't forget this chain of three, one, two, three. And I know I've said that like multiple times already, so just don't forget those. <laughs> so now going on to row seven, we're going to chain up three, one, two, and three, and we're going to turn our work. And for row seven, it's a repeat of row two. So starting with the four front post double crochets here. So just do the four front post double crochets and then four back post double crochets. And again, if you need to, you can rewind this to see what I did for row two, uh, but that's just, we're just doing a repeat of row two for row seven. And I'm gonna finish row seven and then I'll meet you up for row eight. All right, just finishing up row seven here, going on to row eight. Okay, again, I'm gonna just, just say it again. Don't forget to double crochet in that chair, turning chain. And then chain up three, one, two, and three. Turn your work around. You can really start to see the basket weave design already. Look at how cool that's looking. It's so chunky, so awesome. So now going on to row eight, we are going to be repeating row three. So you can see that this starts with four back post double crochets. So we're gonna do back post double crochets on these first four stitches. And then the next four stitches will be front post double crochets. So just opposite of what we just did for the previous row. So Row seven was the repeat of row two, then row eight is the repeat of row three. But then after this row, we are going to change it up again, just like we did for um, row five there um, when we did the change up now. So this uh, is long enough after this row, then we're gonna change it up and go back to, um, for row nine, you know, I'll just meet you up when I, I'll, I'll show you what I mean, because <laughs> we're going to now do the more more of a weaving design, okay? So um, this is just the repeat here. So I'm going to work row eight as a repeat, um, re repeating row three, and then for row nine, we're actually going to repeat row three again. So I'll show you that when I finish row eight. All right, just finishing up row eight here. Don't forget to work in that turning chain. And then we're gonna chain up three and go on to row nine. So now you can see here on this piece, right here, you can see that this length of these um, woven parts are as equal as the ones down below here. So if you want to count them, there should be four. So count one, two, three three and four. Okay, just like down here, there's one, two, three, and four. So we're going to now change it up and work our repeats to be like these ones down here. So it's like the woven design. So what we need to do is turn the work and we are going to repeat row three for row nine. Okay, so we're going to start with back post double crochets. So if you see these, these ones right here look like all front post stitches right here. So there should be four rows of this, one, two, three, and four. So now you know there's four here of these front post looking stitches, so now we have to go to back post. So yarn over, go from the back around your work, and make four back post double crochets now in a row and then we're going to change it up and go on 
to doing four front post double crochets and then four back post double crochets and just repeat row three. So if you need to see how I made row three, you can rewind this video to see that or just follow along with the written pattern uh, for what uh, row corresponds with which row. So row nine is a repeat of row three. Now, at this point, I am going to leave you on your own. You can make your piece as long as you want. As you, all you have to do is just repeat rows two through nine. Okay, so after row nine, we're uh, row nine is our repeat of row three. Okay, so I'm repeating row three now. So once I finish row nine, I'm going to be repeating then rows two through nine. Okay, so that means row 10 is going to be a repeat of row 2. Row 11 is going to be a repeat of row 3. Row 12 is going to be a repeat of row 4. Row, let's see, row 13 is going to be a uh, repeat of row 5. Row, let's see, row 14 is going to be a repeat of row 6. Row 15 is going to be a repeat of row 7. Row 16 is going to be a repeat of row 8. Row 17 is going to be a repeat of row 9, and then you just start all over. So row 18 is going to be a repeat of row 2, row 19 is going to be a repeat of row 3, row 20 is going to be a repeat of row 4, etc, etc, etc. So you can make this as big as you want, okay? So um, that is the repeat, just rows 2 through 9. And I also wanted to show you if you are coming up on the end of a skein like this. I am going to show you how to attach a new ball of yarn. So let me grab my other ball of yarn here. Get the end here. Okay, so what we're going to do is start your stitch just like you would. So yarn over, go through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and oh, you know what? Let's go back one. I'll show you because I'm running out of yarn too soon. Okay, so we're going to start our stitch, whatever stitch you need to make. I'm doing a back post stitch at this point. Yarn over and just pull through the two loops and leave those last two loops on your hook and then grab the new skein of yarn. Okay, if you're changing color, or if you're just grabbing the same color, hook that new yarn on and pull that through those last two loops to finish off that stitch. And then just drop those in the back and just continue on with your stitching. Now when you want to come back, we have to obviously sew in some ends. So I'm just going to do a few stitches here. And you can see in the back here we have those two strands. You can decide to tie them in a knot and then sew them in underneath your work or just like weave them in and out of your stitches like this. And since this is such a bulky yarn, you can just weave it in and out and you won't even notice. And that's all hidden. So you can, and then cut any extra you might have if you have any extra, but just weave it in underneath some stitches and that's how it should be. So now all you have to do is just repeat rows two through nine. So I'm gonna finish up row nine here and then I'm going to just repeat rows two through nine and I'm gonna make this as big as I want it to be for the blanket I'm making. And let me just check my measurement guide here. I don't know exactly how many um, rows I did. I have that in the blog, obviously, how many rows I'm going to do. But at this point, I'm just filming, so I don't really know exactly right now. But in the next few clips, I will tell you how many rows I end up doing. I do want it to be 70 inches long. So um, my blanket is about 70 inches wide right now. I want it to be about 70, 72 inches long uh, for the queen size bed that I want to put it on. So I'm going to do that. And then once I finish making it the length I need it to be, I'll meet you up. We'll go on to the next step together. So good luck. And I'll meet you up when I'm finishing my blanket. All right, welcome back. You can see that I have a huge giant blanket here. I am finished with the main part of the blanket. I do want to do a small border. I have this uh, measuring out the length of this is 72 inches. So that's why the whole thing can't even fit in my camera because 
it is so giant and super heavy so as you can see so when you are finished with however big you want to make your piece um, you can end on any row I, I recommend ending on a row that has you know four of these little like a section here and not ending like just with one section of that change or two you want to end on a full um, color, like a section a full section and that would be like right like rows one through four or I'm sorry two through four two three four or um, six six seven eight and nine so that would be um, the ending there so that's where you want to end and I'm ending over here but I laid this on my bed and you can see here this edge here is a little bit um, messed up like not super straight so I just want to clean up my edges with a single crochet so I'm gonna chain one and I'm actually gonna just work down this side first right here now it, basic single crochet it's not that uh, super difficult in these corner stitches though we are going to put three single crochets so right into this stitch right here we're gonna go in then yarn over and pull through and then yarn over and pull through two loops okay that's a single crochet so we're just gonna do a simple single crochet round now if you want to you can do a half double crochet round or a single crochet round or a uh, double crochet round. So in these corners here, sorry, I said three in there. So we're just going to go back in for another one and another one. So we have three single crochets in that corner. When we come back around, that first single crochet is what we're going to slip stitch to to close this round. Now, wherever your hook fits on the side, okay, on this side here along this edge, we're just going to single crochet. So kind of just go like in the chains along the side, um, basically wherever your hook fits is not just like that, okay. So uh, each row should probably have about two single crochets down the edge. So if you see this row right here, you should put a single crochet up at the top here and then maybe one at the base of that same stitch okay and just do that all along this edge so now I'm at this next row right here so you can see right at the top there and then at the bottom of the stitch okay so I'm just gonna do that simple single crochet row all the way around this whole piece okay so and like I said though in the corners put three single crochets but then after this row we're gonna be finished and that is the blanket so I'm super excited this thing is super heavy I made a queen size blanket um, which measures 72 inches long and mine is actually 70 inches wide it's very close to almost being a square type of um, blanket but it covers the whole bed it is so fabulous and it's so heavy and so warm which is perfect for the winter so just continue on single crocheting around this edge I'm gonna do that I'll meet you up when we're about to fasten off all right so I just crocheted single crocheted all the way around this piece so you can see there's a nice single crochet edging we're gonna go to the first single crochet right here and slip stitch so go into there then yarn over and pull through and pull through that loop there then to fasten this off I like to just chain one and then cut the yarn oops did I just drop my scissors well I'll use these scissors I'll cut my yarn and then we're gonna we're gonna pull that through that chain one there just like that and then pull it a little tighter and then grab your yarn needle right away and just sew in any ends that you have um, lie, like free and you know what this yarn is so easy to maneuver just pull out a little bit yarn your needle and then all I do to sew in my ends is just go underneath these stitches and I've been sewing them in as I went so if when I was adding a new skein of yarn I just sewed in the old ends and I also could crochet over some of them so they were sewn in already so you just sew them in back and forth and be done and there it is our chunky basket weave blanket is complete 
Thank you so much for watching and learning how to make this beautiful, ginormous piece of art. This was so much fun to make, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Big thank you to Red Heart Yarns for providing this yarn. Big thank you to my dad for videotaping and filming. We're working late tonight, so <laughs> we're all tired, but I'm glad we got this finished. So thanks to you for watching. Until next time, happy hooking!